In an interview with CNN, Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov basically lied through his teeth throughout the duration of the interview. He lied about the nature of the invasion into Ukraine. He lied about whether or not the Russian government was targeting civilians and, co and committing war crimes in Ukraine. And that's to be expected. But thankfully, the CNN interviewer actually did a fantastic job at not only asking tough questions, but pushing back. And I'll link you to the full interview or part of the interview, um, most of it, what CNN posted on their YouTube page, uh, because it was really fascinating and I, I think really insightful. Uh, but there was one portion of this interview that stood out to me because of how chilling it was. So the CNN interviewer asked whether or not Russia would rule out using nuclear weapons since Vladimir Putin has hinted that he'd be open to it now multiple times. And he refused to rule it out. He had two opportunities to state unequivocally that they're taking nuclear weapons off the table, and Dmitry Peskov did not do that. Take a look. Can I quickly ask you, though, I need to ask you this, because the world is afraid, and I want to know whether Putin intends the world to be afraid, of the nuclear option. Would he use it? President Putin intends to, intends to make the world listen to and understand our concerns. We've been trying to convey our concerns to the world to Europe, to the United States, for a couple of decades, but no one would listen to us. And before it is too late, it was a decision to start, to, to launch a special operation, military operation, to get rid of entire Russia that was created next to our borders. What? To get rid of Russia? And anti-Russia, because Ukraine, Actually, Ukraine started to be, it was formed by the Western countries, anti-Russia. Oh, okay. This is the problem. Okay, uh, you look, Ukraine is a country, sovereign, it's recognized by the United Nations, it's been around for a very, very long time. But I, I just want to know, I want to ask you again, is President Putin, because again, the Finnish president said to me that when he asked Putin directly about this, because President Putin has laid that card on the table. President Putin said that if anybody tries to stop him, very bad things will happen. And I want to know whether you are convinced or confident that your boss will not use that option. Well, we have a concept of uh, domestic security. And, uh, well, it's public. You can read all the reasons for nuclear uh, arms to be used. So if it is an ex existential threat for our country, then it can be used in accordance with our concept. Well, there are no other reasons uh, that were mentioned in that text. So you are basically saying only an existential threat to your country. Um, I still don't know whether I've got a, a full answer from you, and I just I'm just going to assume that President Putin wants to scare the world and keep the world on tender hooks. That was pure insanity. That was madness. In other words, no, we're not going to take nuclear weapons off the table, and we want the world to know that one man, Vladimir Putin, can unilaterally end all life on Earth. We want you to know that, and we want you to fear for that possibility. It's sick, it's sadistic, it's psychopathic, but that's their strategy. Keep everyone on edge so that way Russia gets what they want out of this illegal war of aggression. It's grotesque. And you'd think that you'd want your opponents to know that you'd never want to use nuclear weapons because of mad, mutual assured destruction. Because if the United States knows that Russia is going to use nuclear weapons, then they're going to use nuclear weapons. And we all die. That's the nature of MAD. So you'd think they want to make it very clear. Of course, we would never use nuclear weapons. We'd only use it in retaliation if they were used against us. That's not what they said there. They're using this as a strategy. Now, do I think that Vladimir Putin is bluffing to an extent? I do. I do think that he's using this threat of nuclear annihilation to kind of get what he wants. But that's not a theory that I want to test. And certainly any United States official who's warmongering and saber rattling and calling for a no-fly zone, which essentially would lead to a direct confrontation with Russia, World War III, and likely nuclear annihilation, they're, they're so irrational. Putin is insane.
I think that he's made that very clear. He's not a rational actor, and the question is, he's suicidal. That's a question that we're all asking ourselves. Would he do the unthinkable? Well, he at least is crazy enough to posture, which in and of itself is insane. But they're saying here, look, if we think that there's an existential threat to Russia, then we'll use nuclear weapons. But what does that mean exactly? What do you characterize as an existential threat? Because they've consistently moved the goalpost, and the former president of Russia, Dmitry Medvedev, who's an ally of Putin, has already said, well, the United States wants to end the Russian motherland. So if you believe that, isn't that an existential threat. So are you already saying that we meet the criteria for you using nuclear weapons? So let's get to what Dmitry Medvedev said, because it's clear that these people are fucking insane. As Brad Dress of The Hill explains, a close ally of Russian President Vladimir Putin on Wednesday accused the U.S. of seeking the end of our motherland and said escalating tensions could result in a nuclear disaster. Dmitry Medvedev, deputy chairman of Russia's Security Council, who also previously served as the country's president and prime minister, wrote in a post on Russian social networking site VK.com that Russia has been the target of the same mediocre and primitive game since the collapse of the Soviet Union. This means that Russia must be humiliated limited, shaken, divided, and destroyed, Medvedev wrote, saying if Americans succeed in that objective, here is the result, the largest nuclear power with an unstable political regime, weak leadership, a collapsed economy, and the maximum number of nuclear warheads aimed at targets in the U.S. and Europe. Medvedev said the U.S. has constantly waged senseless wars since the end of World War II, citing military action in Korea, Vietnam, Afghanistan, and Iraq. He then pinned the blame for tensions between the West and Russia on American aggression. Unlike the American establishment, which wants the end of our motherland, Russia wants to see the United States as a strong and intelligent country and not the last refuge of those who gradually fall into senile insanity, the former Russian president wrote. So what he's basically saying here is that the United States wants to weaken Russia to the point where nuclear weapons are more likely because if you have weak leadership here, if you don't have our leadership, then you might get someone who is crazier, who would actually press that big red button. But we're going to continue to threaten that and talk about the possibility of nuclear warfare as well. It's just insane. And it's ironic that he calls out U.S. imperialism, rightfully so, but then justifies Russian imperialism. How about we just all agree that imperialism is bad full stop, unequivocally so. American imperialism is horrible, but also Russian imperialism is horrible. And it sounds like cry bullying to me. He's blaming the United States and U.S. aggression for their invasion into Ukraine. You're the ones who are the aggressors in this instance. You chose to invade Ukraine. You can withdraw at any moment and end this war right now immediately, but you're not doing that because you chose to do that. Yes, America is an imperialist power, and we have leaders who are warmongers and war criminals who should, who should be behind bars for the rest of their lives. But that doesn't change the fact that you, in this instance, made the decision to invade Ukraine. You did this, and you can end it, but you're not doing that. So yes, America is an imperialist power, and their imperialist wars of aggression should be condemned. But don't condemn imperialism by doing imperialism yourself. That's idiotic. It's like denouncing violence while punching someone in the face. It doesn't make sense. It's a contradiction. And you look foolish. Who falls for this? I mean, in the age of the internet, you can't lie like country you used to lie about wars, right? We saw the way that mass media changed the narrative when it, come, when it came to the Vietnam War. And similarly, you know, in 2022, we all have cameras now. We all have cell phones and we could document not only what's going on, what's really happening, but the war crimes as well. So you can't lie. You can't pee on our legs and say it's raining. We know what's happening. Now, that's not to say that NATO expansionism isn't inherently escalatory, right? I've talked about the U.S. aggression. I've talked before about how the United States government and officials in the U.S. government are just too hawkish. They constantly saber rattle against Russia. I've talked about that prior to all of this. But if you're going to condemn imperialism, for fuck's sake, be consistent. Be consistent. So we have an imperialist denouncing imperialism. It's just truly insane. Now let's try to bring it back to reality because we've been talking about the unthinkable. We've been catastrophizing. But I do want to emphasize that I believe ultimately that Putin is bluffing. I hope that that's the case. 
but I don't want to test that theory. As I've stated, I don't think that we should push it. I don't think we should escalate. I think we absolutely have to do everything in our power to ensure that there is a diplomatic solution that ends this war of aggression. And there is no, I repeat, no direct confrontation between the United States or NATO and Russia, because that would indeed lead to World War III and most likely nuclear annihilation. And, you know, we hear people like Lindsey Graham in the United States and people in the mainstream media call for aggression and escalation via a no-fly zone or whatnot. But I don't think that the warmongers realize that this isn't like other wars, right? When you call for a war with another country, it's easy to do that because it's out of sight and out of mind. You send young people to die because of your geopolitical interest or your natural resource interest in whatever country. But when it comes to nuclear war and the prospect of nuclear annihilation, no leader can hide behind their power. You don't get to be exempt from nuclear annihilation because you're a president or a senator. Everyone dies. Life on the planet is wiped out. Period. End of story. So this isn't some thing that you can talk about flippantly. This isn't some small thing World War III would almost certainly lead to nuclear war, which would almost certainly lead to annihilation of the human race. But I hope that that's not going to be the case. And I certainly don't think that you should worry about this because what can you do about this as an individual? There's nothing that you can do. So there's no reason to live in fear of what could happen. Because if we, uh, and this is going to be super doomer, if we somehow don't end up dying because of nuclear uh, annihilation, we'll end up wiping ourselves out with climate change. So, I mean, it seems like the human race is on a suicide speed run currently, and we want to go extinct, but I just hope that cooler heads prevail. I hope that there's an end to the war, and I hope that we come together as a species and realize that killing ourselves is not in our best interest. But getting back to the issue at hand with Russia and their constant saber-rattling and threat of nuclear annihilation, it's truly just... It's morally reprehensible for them to even put this on the table and not rule it out, very clearly so. But to hold this over the heads of every human being on the planet, it's just... To say that it's gross is an understatement. It's, it's pure madness.